Good evening. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for life. Thank you for every person that you have brought in this room. In Jesus' name, I pray that you may set me free from self and that you may set these people who are before me free from self. Father, I pray that every distraction and every demon may be bound in Jesus' name. Father, I praise you for what you are going to do in this room. And I praise you for the glory that you will receive. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. This is going to distract me. Good evening. Can you hear me? If you have your Bibles, better yet, get your Bibles. And I invite you to Revelations chapter 18, verse 2, verse 4, and verse 5. These are the verses we're going to read. The title of today's message is Start Packing. Start Packing. A couple of things before we take off. We are going to fly at a very high altitude this evening. This room will be the body of the plane. Our pilot is the Holy Spirit, known as the guide in Scripture. Our fuel is going to be faith. I'm just the voice on the plane. I'm not that important. You can forget about me. What's important is what's going to come out of my mouth, my voice is important, but not me. And our destination is at Jesus' feet. And by the way, God is our control tower. And before we take off on this flight, it'll only take 30 to 35 minutes, I hope. I need you to put your cell phones on flight mode so that we don't experience any turbulence. So if you still have your phones on, I plead with you to put them on flight mode mode. I have, I'll give you five seconds for that. And after you have done that, I would like to invite you to Revelations chapter 18, verse 2. The Bible says, and he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of what? Of what? Demons. A prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated what? Birds. Let's read verse 3. For all, not some, all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And by the way, this is spiritual fornication. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. This is where the title of the message comes from. Start packing. And finally, verse 5. For her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her what her iniquities start packing I have never been so excited in my life to preach than I am excited since yesterday and since today this is taking place God is calling a people out of this world God is calling people to prepare themselves because this world will be destroyed I want to invite you to the book of Luke Luke chapter 17 and we shall begin we'll just read verse 20 and then we'll skip to, to other verses in this chapter now verse 20 says now when he this is Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, 
he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with what? Observation. So the Pharisees went to Jesus Christ and they asked him, when will the kingdom come? What is going to take place before the kingdom come? What's going to happen? This is Jesus now answering. I want you to come with me to verse 26. Jesus says this. And as it was in the days of who? Noah. So it will be also in the days of the, of the son of who? The son of man. Verse 27. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Verse 28, likewise, as it was also in the days of who? Of Lot. And that is what we'll study. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. Now, there is nothing wrong with eating. There is nothing wrong with planting. There is nothing wrong with building. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But when that is all you do, then there's something wrong with it. When Christ is not involved in it, when what you do does not help you grow spiritually, when what you do is not for the glory of God, then you have a problem. What Jesus was saying is before I come, people will be so occupied with worldly things that they will forget about me. And he says, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. In the days of Lot, people lived anyhow. There was no law. People had abandoned God and they chose to live the way they felt like it, the way they wanted to. Lot was a righteous man living in a wicked land in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be destroyed because of the sins. And the people who loved sin and refused to let go of sin were to be destroyed with Sodom and Gomorrah. Now Lot went out warning people. He warned his family. He told people to repent. But they ignored him and they did not listen. Did you know that the same happens today? While a preacher is preaching, some are texting, some are sleeping. And people know that what is being taught is the truth. Well, the Bible says that these angels were in town. Lot invited them to his house. They didn't want to go. He insisted and insisted until they finally entered his house. And when they were there, the Bible says that men gathered together from the whole city. They went to the house and they knocked. And they said, bring the men that have come to your house because we want to sleep with them. In Sodom and Gomorrah, same-sex marriage was legal. And did you know that on Friday, in the United States, they legalized same-sex marriage in every state. If a same-sex couple goes to your church and they want to get married, and you reject, you are going against the law. Because it is now lawful to sin. So if you don't sin, you're a criminal. If you stand for the right, you're a criminal. Verse 30. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. If you go to Genesis, when God created the world, the Bible says that God created Adam and who? And Steve? Was it Adam and Steve? It was Adam and who? Adam and Eve. Male and male? What was it? Male and female. The Bible says that God blessed them. And he told them to be fruitful and to what? And to multiply. Male and female, that was the blessing. Be fruitful and multiply. Let me tell you something. God does not approve same-sex marriage. Because same-sex couples cannot multiply. The blessing for Adam and Eve, God said, be fruitful, multiply, 
subdue the earth and fill the earth. Same-sex couples cannot do that. Now, if you are serious about your salvation, you will take this message very seriously. Jesus prophesied a long time ago and said, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be before the Son of Man comes. In the days of Lot, these things were legal. People were departing from God's commandments. But the good news in Revelations is this. Before God destroys this world, as Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, as the world was destroyed with a flood, God is calling out people who are willing to repent, to start packing, and to leave this world soon. My dear friends, are you packing? Are you packing? I want to invite you to the book of Jude. Jude is just before Revelations. Jude only has one chapter. We're going to look at a couple of verses. Verse 1 says, Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ and brother of who? James. To those who are called, sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in who? In Jesus Christ. My dear friends, Jesus will never abandon us. He is writing a letter to those who are called and those who are preserved in who? In Jesus Christ. Before this world will be destroyed, and it will be destroyed. Before God does that, God is going to preserve a people. Verse 2. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Be multiplied to you. He's not saying that they don't have mercy. He's not saying they don't have peace. He's saying that they be multiplied to you. They already have it. His desire is that they have more. Verse 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to who? To the saints. I am writing this letter to you because evil is prevailing. Because those who once professed to be a Christian no longer behave like Christians. I am calling you and exhorting you to stand for the faith, to fight for the faith. Verse 4, for certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness I just want to stop here for a while he mentions that these men are ungodly and then he says they have turned the grace of God into what lasciviousness how can these men be ungodly and yet turn the grace of God into lasciviousness in order for them to do this, they have to be men who profess to be Christians. They have to be men who are in the church. And the way they do things, and if you continue to read, he says, ungodly men who turn the grace of God into lewdness and deny the only Lord, God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5, but I want to remind you, Though you once knew, meaning the things that I'm telling you, they are not new. This is not the first time you have heard of Revelation 18. This is not the first time you have heard that Jesus said that before he comes, things will be as they were in the days of Noah, as they were in the days of Lot. This is nothing new, he says. This is verse 5. He says that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not what? Who did not believe. I want you to skip with me to verse 7. He says this, As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, in a similar manner to these, having given themselves to what? Having given themselves to what? To sexual immorality or fornication and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example 
suffering the vengeance of what? Eternal fire. He's saying, my dear friends, before Jesus comes, what took place before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed is going to take place now. What took place before the world was destroyed with the flood, it is going to take place again before he comes. Verse 8, likewise also these dreamers, he's talking about the people who have crept in unnoticed into the church, likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. And these people are the ones who are leading the majority to depart from God's commandments. The Bible says in verse 4, for certain men have crept in unnoticed. And in verse 8, it says that they are dreamers and they do not re respect authority. They have crept in the church, they lead some away from God's law, and they do not respect authority. Verse 10, still speaking about these people. But these speak evil of whatever they what? They do not know. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. I want you to jump with me to verse 12. The Bible says, These are spots in your love feast, while they feast with you without fear. Serving only who? Themselves. It means they are proud. They are clouds without water. Carried about by the winds. Late autumn trees without fruit. Twice dead. Pulled up by the root. I want us to read a couple of quotations. Could you help me? Just tap. Could you proceed? Oh, this is too big. But I believe we can read it. Ellen White says this. And the message for, for when? What does it say? For today is Babylon the great is what? Is fallen, is fallen. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her what? Of her sins. And that ye receive not of her what? Plagues. This world is going to be destroyed. Jesus Christ is coming very soon. But before God destroys this world, God is going to seal Christians. He's going to seal those who are faithful to him. And this is the right time for us to start packing because this is not our home. We are headed for heaven. But the way we pack for heaven is not the way we pack for ordinary trips. You've got to pack humility. You've got to pack simplicity. You've got to pack the character of Jesus Christ. You cannot take your red horse with you or blue horse. You cannot pack pride. You cannot pack immodesty. You cannot pack self. You cannot pack prayerlessness. We have to pack the character of Jesus Christ. Are you packing? She goes on to say the time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul the observance of the false what of the false sabbath will be urged upon us the time is coming when a false sabbath will be instituted now let me tell you something many of us especially those who have been going to church for a long time we sit we listen to these things and we say I will never worship on another day. I will never disobey God. I will be faithful. Let me tell you something. It is very easy for you to say that you will do that now when things are okay. But when things are not okay, my dear friends, it is very different. It is very different. If you are not praying... If you are not giving yourself to Christ daily, there is absolutely no way you can stand. If you have not been packing the right way, if you have not been investing in Christ, then you will not stand on that day. 
Those who yield, those who have yielded step by step to worldly what? Demands and conformed to worldly customs will then yield to the powers that be what? To the powers that be rather than subject themselves to derision, insult, threatened, imprisonment, and death. At that time, the gold will be separated from the dross. True godliness will be clearly distinguished from the appearance and tinsel of it. Many a star that we have admired for its brilliance will then go out in darkness. When I read this, I whispered a prayer and said, God, may this not happen to me. She says, many stars who were shining before, those who were so quick in saying, I will not betray God, those who went from dorm to dorm preaching, on those days, their lights will not shine anymore because they relied on themselves, on the knowledge they had, and not in God. She goes on to say, those who have assumed the ornaments of the sanctuary, <laughs> but are not clothed with Christ's righteousness, meaning those who are preaching about the sanctuary, those that explain to you everything about the sanctuary, but they are not clothed with Christ's righteousness, will then appear in the shame of their own nakedness. Please proceed. Last slides. She says, Among earth's inhabitants, scattered in every land, there are those who have not bowed the knee to who? To Baal. Like the stars of heaven. Now let me tell you something about stars. I used to think that stars would come out in the night. I used to think that stars were not there during the day. That's what I used to think. And I'm actually a little bit hesitant to say this, but I only learned this, I think, two years ago. The stars are even there during the day. But because there is no darkness, you can't see them. Christians are like stars in the last days. The darkness is going to reveal their light. It's going to reveal the character of Christ. She goes on to say, like the stars of heaven, which appear only at night, these faithful ones will shine forth when darkness covers the what? The earth. And gross darkness, the people. I love this. In heathen Africa, in the Catholic lands of Europe and of South America, in China, in India, in the islands of the sea, this is Philippines, and in all the dark corners of the earth, God has in reserve a firmament of chosen ones that will yet shine forth amidst the darkness, revealing clearly to an apostate world the transforming power of obedience to his law. Yes, we know about this. But my friends, ask yourselves this. And don't just answer this question quickly. But are you truly filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you one of those that God is preserving in Africa, in, in, in South America, in China, in India, or in the islands of the world? Are you one of those stars that God is keeping that when darkness covers the earth, He's going to use you to bring light? How much time do you spend with God on your knees? A mistake we make when we read the Bible often, and even as people come to worship and to church, we listen to a sermon and we say, this sermon would be a good sermon for my roommate. This sermon would be a good sermon for my friend, or for my, for my girlfriend, or for my boyfriend, or for my wife. This sermon would be a good sermon for so-and-so. This sermon is for you. This sermon is for you. Are you ready when darkness covers the earth will you be one of those stars that will shine or one of those stars that will go out she goes on to say even now they are appearing in every nation even now they are shining even now they are preaching the truth 
even now they have the character of Jesus Christ. Among every tongue and people, and in the hour of deepest apostasy, God is keeping them for the hour of deepest apostasy. When Satan's supreme effort is made to cause all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive under the penalty of death the sign of allegiance to a false rest day, these faithful ones, blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, will shine as lights in the world. Revelations 16, verse, verse 16. She goes on to say at the end, which I love so much, the darker the night, the more brilliantly will they shine. Darkness is about to cover the world. The Bible says that no one knows when Jesus will come. And Jesus said, if anyone tells you I'm in Mindanao or I'm in Davao, don't believe. Because when I come, every eye will see me. I know with all my heart that Jesus is coming soon. And I know that you have been hearing that. But my dear friends, Jesus' second coming is closer than we think. Jesus is coming. Jesus is at the door. And we have no time to waste time. We've got to take our spiritual state spiritually. Are you truly walking with Jesus Christ? There's a story of a missionary who went to preach at a certain place. And when he got there, he met a small boy. And a small boy came to him and said to him, So you must be a missionary. And he said, Yes, I am. So you've come here to tell us about Jesus. And the missionary said, Yes, I have come here to tell you about Jesus. And he said, Oh, Jesus was amazing. Jesus was kind. Jesus was humble. Jesus was loving. Jesus was prayerful. Jesus was gentle. Jesus was soft. Jesus was a good person. You have come here to tell us more about Jesus. I'm excited. And the missionary said, yes, I have come to tell you about Jesus. The little boy looked at him and told him, you know, that is very nice that you have come here to tell us about Jesus. We have had many people come here to tell us about Jesus, but we have not seen one person like Jesus in this place. And so it is today. Are you truly Christ-like? When Jesus comes and seals his people, and as the sealing goes on, and by the way, you receive the seal by obeying God, by obeying his commandments, by having the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And you receive the seal of the beast of the devil by not obeying God, by not settling in the truth. Knowing the truth and living the truth are two different things. My dear friends, search your heart. Are you ready? Have you been packing for heaven or are you packing for hell what are you packing for have you been packing prayer have you been investing in prayer you need to pack humility for heaven there is no room for pride there are you packing gentleness what are you packing are the things you packing can they can 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 you take them to heaven How many times have you come to this place for worship? And how many times can you genuinely tell me that when you come here, you feel the power of the Holy Spirit? How many times can you genuinely say you are, you've been convicted? God has spoken to you. And as you leave this place, you know that God has spoken to you and that God was here with you. You see, church today is becoming just a, a, a formalism. We don't even know why we go anymore. We just go. We just come. 
We get our Bibles at times and read, but we don't read to know God. We read so that we can show others that we know. We read just to say we have read, just to be, to be smarter than others, to know more than others. My dear friends, we have come to this place this evening to know God. Our goal is to know God. It is to grow in God and to have a genuine relationship with Him. Jesus is coming soon. What are you packing? What have you been packing? Can you take them to heaven? I want to invite you to bow your heads with me. I want to invite you to bow your heads. My greatest fear is to preach a sermon that God has not told me to preach. I don't care what happens to me. I don't care who stands before me. As long as God had to has told me to say it, I say it. The message I have shared does not come from me. You need to hear this. God has spoken. God has convicted. And we need to make a decision this evening. We need to search our hearts through the Holy Spirit and remove the unclean things we are packing. The worldly entertainment. Some of us are, are stuck and bound by pornography. Worldly entertainment, pride. And we cannot pack those things for heaven. We keep some of the commandments, we break some. We are only faithful in church. When we are alone, we are unfaithful. My dear friends, I want to invite you to pray with me. And as I pray, I want you to also pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for life and for the privilege to stand. I thank you for every soul in this room. And I thank you for stretching your hands towards us. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this room. Father in heaven, we have sinned against you in thoughts and in action, intentionally and unintentionally. Pride has consumed us. We have allowed self. We have allowed selfishness. We have allowed worldly things. We have been packing ungodly things for a godly place. But Father, this evening, we want to unpack all of those things in Jesus' name. And we come before you pleading that you forgive our sins, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. And that you fill us with your Holy Spirit. May you bless every person in this room spiritually. May you bless them physically. May you provide financially for those who are struggling. There are some who do not pray as they were praying before. There are some who do not read as they were reading before. And there are some who read not to know you, but so that they can boast that they know about you. This evening, in Jesus' name, I pray that your Holy Spirit may disturb them until they are set free from self and receive the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, have mercy, O Father, upon us. Amen.